Hello, fabulous church family. I hope you're doing well. This is kind of interesting. This is a new thing for me, getting to do a Devo uh, video like this, and I appreciate Lucas uh, asking me, so I'm glad to help out, and it'll be lots of fun. Hopefully, we'll talk about some good stuff in the next 15 minutes or so. Today, I want to share with you a story about a hero of faith in the Bible. I asked my daughter, Sarah Lynn, who she thought was a great woman of faith in the Bible. She mentioned one that for me is kind of difficult to wrap my mind around as far as how God used her in such a great way. This woman believed in God and allowed God to work through her to achieve his plan. Her name is found in two, pla two amazing places in the New Testament, but her story is in the book of Joshua. First, I want to read you her name in the first chapter of Matthew, where God shows her place in the lineage of Jesus. Matthew chapter 1, verse 5, Salmon was the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Now let's read from the Hall of Faith chapter, Hebrews chapter 11, where the writer mentions her and her extraordinary faith. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 30 and 31. It was by faith that the people of Israel marched around Jericho for seven days, and the walls came crashing down. It was by faith Rahab the prostitute was not destroyed with the people in her city who refused to obey God, for she had given a friendly welcome to the spies. Through the lens of these three verses in the New Testament, let's go look at the book of Joshua and read her story to learn more about Rahab. Let me start by giving you a quick context to the story that is going to show us Rahab's faith. God is going to give the land of Canaan to the Israelites. Rahab lives in Jericho, and although it has high and mighty walls, it is very fortified and will not be easily taken by an enemy. We find out that those inside the walls of Jericho were very concerned that the Israelites were coming. Joshua sent two spies ahead of the Israelites to scout out the land around Jericho. We think of Joshua as a great man of faith. In Joshua chapter 1, God gives Joshua and the Israelites a charge that he would give them the land of Canaan. They respond to Joshua in that charge in verses 16 and 18. They are ready to watch God work for them. Now let's pick up in Joshua chapter 2 and read about Rahab's story. Then Joshua, son of Nun, secretly sent two spies. Go, look over the land, he said, especially Jericho. So they went and entered the house of a prostitute named Rahab and stayed there. The king of Jericho was told, Look, some of the Israelites have come here to spy out the land. So the king of Jericho sent this message to Rahab. Bring out the men who came to you and entered your house, because they have come to spy out the whole land. But the woman had taken the two men and hidden them. She said, Yes, men did come to me, but I did not know where they had come from. At dusk, when it was time for the city gate to close, they left. I don't know which way they went. Go after them quickly. You may catch up with them. But she had taken them up on the roof and hidden them under the stalks of flax that she had laid out on the roof. So the men set out in pursuit of the spies on the road that leads to the fords of Jordan. And as soon as the pursuers had gone out, the gates were shut. Before the spies lay down for the night, she went up on the roof and said to them, I know that the Lord has given you this land and that a great fear of you has fallen on us so that all who live in this country are melting in fear because of you. We have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for when you came out of Egypt, and when you did, and what you did to Sihon and Og, the two kings of the Amorites east of the Jordan, whom you completely destroyed. When we heard of it, our hearts melted in fear, and everyone's courage failed because of you. For the Lord your God is God in heaven, above and on the earth below. Now then, please swear to me by the Lord that you will show kindness to me and my family because I have shown kindness to you. 
Give me a sure sign that you will spare the lives of my father and mother, my brothers and sisters, and all who belong to them, and that you will save us from death. Our lives for your lives, as the, the men assured her. If you don't tell her what we are doing, we will treat you kindly and faithfully when the Lord gives us this land. So she sent them she let them down by a rope through the window of a house that she lived in was part of the hill, part of the city wall. She said to them, Go to the hills so the pursuers do not find you. Hide yourselves there for three days until they return, and then go your way. Now the men had said to her, This oath you made us swear will not be binding on us unless... When we enter the land, you have tied this scarlet cord in the window through which you let us down. And unless you have brought your father and mother, your brothers and all your family into your house, if any of them go outside your house into the street, their blood will be on their own heads. We will not be responsible. As for those who are in the house with you, their blood will be on our head if a hand is laid on them. But if you tell what we are doing, we will release, be released from the oath you made us swear. Agreed, she said. Let it be as you say. So she, she sent them away, and they departed. And she tied the scarlet cord in the window. We know that the Lord <clears throat> did, have, did hand the city of Jericho over to the Israelites. The city and the people were destroyed. Everyone except for Rahab and her family and the men that were in her house. Joshua 6, 23 and 25. The men who had been spies went in and brought, brought out Rahab, her father, mother, brothers, and other relatives who were with her. They moved her whole family to a safe place near the camp of Israel. To me, the faith that Rahab had was simple but amazing. She believed the stories of how God was fighting for his people, escaping Egypt, crossing on dry land through the Red Sea, and cities that were already being destroyed. She believed what was going to happen to Jericho. Jericho is going to be conquered and or destroyed by God somehow, and she believed it. She took measures to be used by God to help his people. She professed her faith by helping the spies. She professed her faith by saying she knows God is the supreme God of the heavens above and the earth below. In turn, God protected her and her family. Because of her being willing to be used by God and help the spies, God spared her family and she found a man named Solomon, and they had a son named Boaz. Through her lineage, God brought us salvation through Christ Jesus. Rahab's story in God's plan is awesome because he uses someone who the world might consider broken. She saw God and what he can do in the world, but also in her life. She stepped up to help the two spies who were men of God. God led them to her because he knew she would help. She had courage to step up and confront the king and others um, sent by the ruler of Jericho. These thoughts made me think of how we can let God use us in this world. What if I don't know how God is using me? What if I'm too broken like the prostitute Rahab? Will God still use me? With these thoughts, I came across this story. A water bearer in India had two large pots. Both hung on the ends of a pole which he carried across his neck. One of the pots had a crack in it, while the other pot was perfect and always delivered a full portion of water. At the end of the long walk from the stream to the house, the cracked pot always arrived half full. The poor cracked pot was ashamed of its own imperfection and miserable that it was able to accomplish only half 
of what it was made to do. After two years of what perceived to be a bitter failure, it spoke to the water bearer one day by the stream. I am ashamed of myself, and I want to apologize to you. I have been able to deliver only half my load because this crack in my side causes water to leak out all the way back to your house. Because of my flaws, you have to do all this work, and you don't get a full value from your efforts. The bearer said to the pot, Did you notice that there were only flowers on your side of the path, but not on the other pot's side? That is because I have always known about your flaw. And I planted flower seeds on your side of the path. And every day while we walk back, you have watered them. For two years, I have been able to pick these beautiful flowers to decorate the table without you being just the way you are. There would not be this beauty to grace my house. So to finish, I want to think about Rahab's story, how it can help me with my faith and my willingness to let God use me. I want to be like Rahab and know that God is in control. She told the spies she knows that the Lord has given the Israelites the land. I want to know that God is in control. I want to be like Rahab and believe the stories about God and how he fights for his people. She had heard the stories about Egypt and the cities that were destroyed before Jericho. I want to believe the stories that are in God's word and use them to enrich my life and the lives of those around me. I want to be like Rahab and know that if I do what God asks, he will take care of me. The command for her family and her was simple. Keep the scarlet cord hanging out of her window and keep her family inside the house and they would be spared. I want to know that God is going to take care of my family as we walk upon the earth. Then one day we will be found faithful and live with our Father in heaven. I want you to know that God loves you. He wants you to be a part of his kingdom. I want you to know that the Bible is full of stories of real people that walked this earth, stories that tell us how God has worked in people's lives and that he will work in yours too. Even if you are not in Christ right now, that does not mean God won't use you. If you are in Christ and you think you're too broken to be used by God, Remember this, he used a woman who was not only not a part of the Israelite family, he chose, or the, who were the chief, chosen people of God, but she was a prostitute and scorned by the world as well. Furthermore, he did not just use her to help the spies. She became a part of the lineage of Jesus, the Savior of the world. So I want you to remember this. God does not want God does not ask that your heart be perfect. He just wants your heart. He just wants you. So stay safe and keep looking to Jesus.